I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome once again to Rhema Praise. We are so glad that you have tuned in today. Yeah, and this month is a very special it month. It is a very special it's, month. It's, a, it's Winter Bible Seminar Month, and this year it's Winter Bible Seminar and Worldwide Homecoming for the Rhema campuses all over the world. That's right. So yeah, that's February. That's next week. Yeah, it is next week, February yes. the the 17th through the 22nd, uh -huh. so uh, and that, and that, and that is next week, so. And you know, honey, in honor of that for this month, yes. uh, we are going back in, into the archives. We're getting archives. in a time machine and we're, going backwards yes, we're in going time. going back, yes. We're going back and showing some things from your dad. Right. Uh, he spoke at Winter Bible Seminar on uh, the reality of heaven and hell. Right. And so we're going to be playing that the next two weeks. Right, yes. It It'll be a two part. It'll be a one part, and then the next week will be the next part. And actually, somebody said, Well, why are you doing this? Well, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ tells us that we can either spend our eternities in heaven or in hell. And so I believe this timeless teaching message by my dad will help you to have a, a, eye-opening to the scriptures uh, about that. And you know, honey, the reason your dad can would speak so fervently about it is because actually uh, he went to hell. Yeah, he uh, died. And he, he died, and, yeah. yes. Yeah. And uh, so it was quite a supernatural experience. Yes, it was. And he, he speaks with very, uh, it's very... Um, Compelling. Uh, uh, compelling, yes. yes. <laughs> so why don't we go where he's talking about that right now. We need to remember that there is an eternity. We need to remember that there is a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. Amen. 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 Praise God. And we may, may be ready for heaven ourselves, but the vast majority in the world are on the road to hell. We need to arrest them. We need to gather their attention. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so God called some of us, you know, to be Bible teachers and to teach. But we need to remember that one of the ministries uh, is an evangelist. Amen. Amen. And we need to remember that even though Paul wrote to Timothy, and Timothy at the time was pastor of a church, and yet he told him, do the work of an evangelist. Amen. Amen. Do the work of an evangelist. Every one of us should be so uh, uh, well on fire for God, praise God, and so interested in the lost that you just have to go tell them. Amen. Amen. Just have to go tell them. Praise God. Some folks wonder, well, I don't know whether God called me to preach or not. Well, in one sense of the word, he called all of us to tell the story, to be witnesses. But right on the other hand, there is a call upon us. Amen. And, uh, you, you know, uh, when I got born again on the bed of sickness way back in 1933, and then after 15 months, 16 months of bed fast, was healed and raised up from the bed, I, I tell you, I wanted to go tell the story so I'm bad, just 17 years old, I'd meet somebody on the street. And in those days, see, depression days. We're talking about 1934, 1935, right in the middle of the Great Depression. Men are out of work. I mean, you could, have a, you could have a street service every day. The streets are full of people. I'd just walk up to somebody on the street, you know, and, and tell them, do you know I'd know there's a hell if I didn't have a Bible? They'd look at you and, huh? Huh? What, what'd you say? I said, I'd know there's a hell if I didn't have the Bible. Well, how would you know? I said, well, right over here. She is in my hometown, and this is up on the... The, the courthouse square, I'd say right over here at 405 North College Street. Now, it was just a few, when I was talking to them, it was a few months ago because it was April the 22nd, 1933. Amen. That was on a Saturday night. 
Amen. At 7.30. Now, I'd been sickly all my life and never really had a childhood like others, and, and it became worse. Doctors made house calls. They'd call the doctor. But he was at the hospital, and he would come as soon as he finished at the hospital, come to our house. But I got worse, and so they called another doctor that lived only two blocks away, Dr. Mathis. But anyway, at 7.30, Saturday night, 22nd day of April, 1933, just as Grandpa's clock on the mantelpiece in this south bedroom struck 7.30, my heart stopped. Faster than I can tell you, I felt the circulation cut off way down the end of my toes. In other words, my toes, my feet, my, my knees, my thighs just, just went numb. And I leaped out of my body like a diver would leap out of, oh, oh, off of a diving boat into the swimming pool. And when I leaped out of my body, I began to descend, feet first, descend, go down, down. I looked back up. I could see the lights of the earth. Finally, they all vanished away. Darkness. The Bible talks about being cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Darkness encompassed me around about. Darker, darkness that's blacker than any night man's ever seen. Seemed if you'd had a knife, you could cut a chunk of it out. And so I went down through the darkness. And the further down you went, the, the hotter it got. And finally, way down beneath me, I could see fingers of light flickering on the wall of darkness. And I came to the bottom of the pit. And when I did, I saw the gates of hell. And I continued like a magnet pulls metal to itself. And I, I knew once I go through those gates, I can't come back. And, and so I tried to slow my descent down. And uh, there was a creature. I don't know what it looked like. I never did look at it. My gaze was riveted on the fires of hell. Giant orange flames with a white crest. And, and so this creature took me by the arm, the right arm, to escort me in. And thank God when he did, there was a voice that spoke. I don't know what he said. It wasn't English. It wasn't English. I don't know what he said. But it's a man's voice. And when he spoke, that whole place shook, just like there's an earthquake on. And there was an irresistible pull to my back, like a magnet draws metal. And I just began to float backwards. And then when I got back here, then I came up. I came up on the porch outside. We had one of those old-time houses like they, you, you know, had the south and then Texas, a porch nearly all the way around the house. I came up on the porch on the south side of the house. I saw the giant trees in the yard. I came right through the wall. I saw my grandmother as she held me in her arms. I seemed to leap inside my body. When I got inside my body, then I said to my grandmother, I'm going again. I don't know how I knew that, but I said, I'm going again. And, and I said, uh, tell mama, I said goodbye. I said, where's mama? And, and she said, well, I told her you was gone. I told her you was dead. And she rushed out on the porch of praying. I heard her then as she came around that porch to the south, praying at the top of her voice. And I said, well, and, and so I said, uh, Granny said, I'll go get her. And Granny got up to go, and I said, no, 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 I'll tell you, when you get down to the end of it, you want somebody with you, especially if you're not saved. You want somebody. Thank God we have somebody. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And so I said, uh, uh, she started to go, and I, and, and I said, no, 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 don't, don't leave me. Don't leave me. And so she called out, but she, uh, and, and, but she couldn't make mom hear because she is praying so loud. And so I said, you tell her. You tell her for me. Tell mama I said goodbye. Tell mama I said I love her. Tell mama I said I appreciate her when my daddy left, trying to make a living for us four kids until finally her health failed. And uh, I said, uh, Tell mama that I said, if I've ever put a gray hair in her head or a wrinkle in her face, then I'm sorry. Amen. I said, Granny, I'm, go I'm going again. I knew I was. I said, uh, uh, goodbye. I said, you've been a second mother to me. I went to live with my grandparents. Mama's had complete mental, physical, nervous breakdown. And, and I went to live with my grandparents at when I was nine years of age. And my grandmother always said, kiss me right there. Kiss me right there. So I kissed her on the cheek, and my heart stopped. The circulation cut out, down to the end of my toes. And, and, and when it hit me here, I leaped out of my body. And when I leaped out of my body, exactly the same experience. I began to descend down, 
down, down, down, down. I know it's only a few seconds or moments, but it seemed like an eternity nearly, till finally the darkness encompassed me. The dark, and it, the further down you went, the darker and the hotter it became. Finally, I could see the f- f- lights flickering on the wall of darkness. I came to the bottom of the pit. I saw the gates of hell. I gazed into hell itself. And I said, uh, and I tried to slow down my descent. And I did slow it down some. But the creature of some kind, I don't know. Years later or sometime later, I read in the Bible where it said, hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee. Isaiah said that. Well, I saw that. Hell from beneath was moved to meet me at my coming. And so that creature took me by this arm, right arm, to escort me in. I'll talk more about that later. And so when he did, though, thank God, that voice spoke. I don't know what he said. It was a foreign tongue to me. But whatever he said worked. That creature took his hand off my arm. And like an irresistible pull, I just came floating back floating back, and then I began to come up. And I came up the first time on the porch just outside the south bedroom. The second time, I came up at the foot of the bed. I saw my body lying there on the bed. I saw my grandmother. She held me in her arms. I seemed to leap from the foot of the bed inside my body like a man would slip his foot inside of his boot in the morning time. And then I said to Granny, you know, we sit out in the world. We said the third time's charm. I said, I'm going again. The third time charm, I won't be back. She said, I thought you wasn't coming back that time, son. And so I left a word for him. I said, tell Grandpa. I appreciate him giving me a home when I had none. Tell Grandpa goodbye. Tell my, I left a word for my older sister, my older brother, and my younger brother. And my heart stopped. And I leaped out of my body. And I began to descend down, 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 till the darkness encompassed me round about. Darkness is just so dense you couldn't see your hand if it's one inch in front of your eye. And so, up till now, some way or another, I I didn't realize this is real. I thought this is an hallucination. And so, I knew, you know, in the world we say the third time's charm. And I'd said to Grandma, I won't be back this time. And so in the darkness, in the darkness, I, I literally screamed. If I could do it like I did it, I'd almost scare you out of your wits. But I literally screamed, God, God, I belong to the church. I've been baptized in water. I'm trying to tell him I'm going the wrong direction. <laughs> Amen. I shouldn't be. And, and I was scared because I thought I'm not coming back this time. And I've already got a glimpse of hell and what it looked like. And so I said, there's no answer. Only the echo of my own voice in the darkness. You ever been in a cavern like Carlsbad Cavern, for instance? I've been there. And you cry out, you know, and your voice will echo across the chasm. My voice only came back to echo me. God, God, I've been baptized in water. And so the second time, I cried a little louder. God, God, I belong to the church. I've been baptized in water. No answer, only my own voice. Third time, I literally screamed, God, God, I belong to the church. I've been baptized in water. And I came to the bottom of the pit. I gazed through the gates of hell. They pull me. I'm floating that direction. That creature took me by the arm to escort me in. But thank God. Thank God. Spiritual things never grow old. You remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4.16? For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perisheth, or as the margin says, is decaying, talking about the body. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. 
You'll never be any older spiritually than you are right now. Hallelujah. Spiritual things never grow old. This coming April the 22nd, it'll be 70 years ago that that happened to me. It's just as real to me as though it happened last Saturday night. Just as real. Just as real. Just as real. In 70 years, never one day has passed that I haven't thought about dying. Somebody said, that's remorseful. Oh, no, now I'm going a different direction. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'd praise myself to sleep every night, thanking God I didn't go to hell. And so that creature took me by the arm the third time to escort me through those gates. I was going to put up a fight if I could. But thanks be unto God, that voice spoke. I don't know what he said. It's a foreign language to me. But whatever he said, I'd say maybe he spoke 10 or 12 words. But whatever he said, that creature took his hand off my arm. And there was an irresistible pull, like a metal draws, like a magnet draws metal to itself, to my back. And I came, come floating back, like you'd float in the air, you know. In other words, like, like those astronauts walking in space. And then... When I got back here, then up. And I was about, came right back through the darkness again before you get, began to see the lights. So before I could ever see the lights of the earth, I began to pray. See, the inward man's a real man. Amen. The spirit man. I began to pray and, and ask God to forgive me and ask God to save me. And I came up beside the bed. The only difference between all three experiences, once I came up at, on the porch, other time I came up at the foot of the bed, and this time I came up right beside the bed. It leaped inside my body. I got inside my body. My physical voice picked up my prayer light right in the middle of a sentence. Amen. And we lived in the best part of town. In fact, just one block, just well, a half a block, from my grandfather's house is what they call Millionaire Row. In fact, he started to buy a house there, but even depressing the taxes so high, he decided not to. Nonetheless, we lived in the best part of town. And they tell me, though, that me and mom, and you know, you didn't have traffic 1933 like you do today, very little traffic. But they tell me that me and mama prayed so loud that we blocked the traffic two blocks away. Just piled up. But folks, I guess, thought somebody died. Well, it was. Amen. <laughs> Mama praying at the top of her voice, and I'll tell you, I prayed. Somebody said, I don't believe in loud praying. Well, I'm sort of a conservative person myself, but I'll tell you, I prayed out loud. <laughs> Amen. And every, every, every meeting I hold, you, you hear me, every altar call I give, I have for these many years, I tell people there's a hell to shun and there's a heaven to gain. It's up to you whether you go to heaven or whether you go to hell. Amen? Thank God forevermore. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Friends, thank God for our blessings. Thank God for all we have in this life. But my friends, there's a better life for we who are Christians. Amen? And we need to warn those who do not know, those who are unsaved. There is a hell to shun. I mean, if half of what he says here about hell is true, I mean, it's enough to stir every one of us up. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Now, notice this, that hell, what kind of a place is it? It's a place of conscious torment. It's a place of eternal memory. Remember what he said? Abraham said to the rich man, remember, remember. Remember what? That thou in thy lifetime, remember it. It's a place where people see. He saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. It's a place where people talk. He cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus and dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. It's a place where people cry out. It's a place of no escape. It's a place of anxiety for loved ones. 
He might not have been concerned in this life, but now even there in hell, he's anxious. He's concerned about his five brothers. He didn't want them to come to this place of torment. It's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Five times that's mentioned in the New Testament. It's a place of weeping and wailing. It's a place where the fire is not quenched. It's a place where there's no rest day or night. Revelation 14, 11. It's a place of smoking torment. Revelation 14, 11 again. It's a place, eventually, they'll be cast in the lake of fire where it's a lake of fire of brimstone. It's a place of eternal death, the second death. That means eternally separated from God. But there's only one way to escape it. That's to be born again. As you listen to this message, if you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Or even if you have accepted Christ, but you know you're not where you're supposed to be and you need, just need to rededicate yourself to God. I want you to pray this prayer with me or repeat it after me with Miss Lynette right now. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for Jesus. I believe that he's the Son of God. I believe he's the Son of God. I believe he died for my sin. I believe he died for my sin. And rose from the grave. And rose from the grave. You said in your holy word. You said in your holy word. That if I would believe these things in my heart. That if I would believe these things in my heart. And confess him as Lord. And confess him as Lord. With my mouth. With my mouth. I would be saved. I would be saved. I thank you now. I thank you now. That you have heard me confess this with my mouth. That you have heard me confess this with my mouth. And I believe this in my heart. And I believe this in my heart. And I thank you now. And I thank you now. That I'm a new person in Christ that Jesus. That I am a new person in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with us for salvation or rededication, would you email us at partnerservice at rhema.org? It's on the screen there. Just go to your computer and email us and talk to us about it. We, we want to connect with you. you know, Thank you for praying this prayer. Your life will never be the same. And you know, honey, I was thinking about as those that prayed this prayer, well, of course, we're so excited about it because they're now into the family of God. Yes. But I think about the fact that the angels are rejoicing in heaven. Right, because, that's what the Bible says. Yes, it says rejoice. they rejoice over a sinner coming home. That's right, that's yes. right, that's right. Well, our offer for this month is, uh, is a little different than a normal offer. Yes. We're offering the Kenneth E. Hagen Legacy Bible. And if, of course, it's, it's a, a beautiful, beautiful Bible. Bible. In fact, one thing I like about it, you can open it and it just opens up like this. Yes. You know, so many times you have to buy, and it's got a beautiful leather. Soft, soft leather. leather. I love the soft got leather. A, got our logo here. Then here in the front, it has the 26 lessons by dad. It also has a, a his picture, a really good picture of him. Yes. And then it has the concordance, and then it has a... a, a Harmony of the of the four Gospels that Craig, my son, found and wanted to put in there, which is really good. Now, this Bible is selling for uh, uh, this month for one hundred and twenty nine ninety five. But if you order the Bible, you're going to get free of charge. Free of charge. Last month. I, uh, last month, last uh, last week, I spoke on Keys to Greater Glory, well, part one. There, there, there's three CDs here. You get that. And then you get a, a, a CD that the message that Dad is speaking right now, the realities of heaven and hell. And then you get a DVD of his uh, Bringing Back the King, Timeless Teaching, Bring Him. Now, all of these sell for $42.95, and if you just want these, you can get these for $42.95. But if you 
purchase the Bible, we're going to throw these in and give these to you free. That's four CDs and one DVD, and it's one twenty nine five. Go to go right now to the computer and yes. order that right now. Uh, the information is there on the screen, so just go ahead and get a hold of those because you're going to want to get a hold of those. Those are some great, great teaching. I did that, that teaching 16 years ago in 2003. Yes. At, uh, at the uh, Winter Bible Seminar. Yes. The Keys to Greater Glory. Uh, so you're probably going to want to, to get a hold of those. That's right. So don't forget Winter Bible Seminar begins next week, February the 17th through the 22nd. Right. And then it becomes busy in March. Yes. Uh, we're going down to Texas in March. We're going to New Bronzeville, Texas, and that is March 17th through the 19th at Living uh, at Tree of Life Church. Yes. Uh, the Duncans there. And then we're going on up. We're going up, up to, Waco, to Waco, March to, the 20 through the 22nd at Family Worship Center. Yes. So, hey, if you live in those areas, hey, make make plans to come out and see us. And if, you, if you're watching and you know people that you don't live there, but you know friends there, or relatives there, yes. hey, Call them and tell them about it and get them to come out. Hey, you want more information about these crusades or any of our crusades because we got them coming up all over, yes. just go to rhema.org and you can get all of that information. Well, once again, we want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. This month from Kenneth Hagen Ministries, the Kenneth e. Hagen Legacy Bible plus three free gifts when you purchase the Legacy Bible. This beautifully bound black genuine leather King James giant print Bible contains a collection of 26 lessons on faith by Kenneth E. Hagan, a concordance and a harmony of the four gospels, plus the reality of heaven and hell audio CD and the DVD bringing back the King by Kenneth E. Hagan. Also the three CD series keys to the greater glory by Kenneth W. Hagan. Get this beautiful Kenneth E. Hagan legacy Bible and the free DVD and CDs for only $129.95. Just call toll free 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime at rhema.org to order. Or you can purchase only the DVD and CD products without the Legacy Bible for only $42.95. Order today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.